I honestly started Courtney's house because no child should have to go through what I did when I wanted help. Instead of being arrested and charged, children should be able to focus on their trauma recovery. So all of the programs at Courtney's House is based on my experience of what I thought would have been helped me get on the right path. So with the lack of services that we have in D.C., we're mainly the only people as a one-stop shop. I honestly see Courtney's House as a one-stop shop where we also focus on trauma recovery, but train law enforcement as well. We train service providers so they can see and identify trafficking victims. We also train all staff and other nonprofits so our children will not have to go through the stigma of being just a prostitute when they're actually being trafficked each day. At Courtney's house, we also try to focus on the misconceptions of sex trafficking. We try to get people to understand that these children who are under the age of 18 are not prostitutes, that they're not doing this because they want to or survival sex. There's no such thing as survival sex at Courtney's house. How can one survive rape each day on the street? The need for shelter for specialized services for trafficking victims is a great need throughout the country. Did you know that there's only a handful of organizations throughout the country that actually work with sex trafficking girls? Courtney's House will be the first of its kind in the Washington, D.C. metro area. We have six beds that will serve ages 12 to 14. Now, as you know, six beds is not a lot to provide, and that's why we have to also provide direct services for our kids who have wonderful homes, but they need the counseling component, they need the support groups, they need the case management, and they definitely need the law services that we provide as well. Courtney's House Group Home will be the first group home in our area to provide long-term care. When I say long-term care, I honestly mean from six months to three years which is the maximum stay in the state of Virginia for a group home. Now, just because they're in that housing program and it's six months to three years doesn't mean we stop our services. At Courtney's House Drop-In Center, there is no time span to have services. Our kids become mentor and mentor other children who are also being sex trafficked as well. To really conquer sex trafficking, we have to work on many, many levels. One is really through legislative reform. That means that federal law contradicts local law right now. Federal law says that any child that's under the age of 18 is a victim and cannot sell themselves. But local law contradicts this. They say that the victim is actually the criminal and they put her in juvenile detention and charge her. They don't charge the trafficker in that. So at Courtney's house, we honestly sit with them and we created our own sex trafficking assessments. This means we gather information of their trafficking situation, all the locations they were, they've been to, all the men who's bought sex from them, even if they have pictures of the trafficker on the internet. We print all these out, we build a case, and with their permission, we bring this to law enforcement so they can prosecute the traffickers. The next step to conquer sex trafficking is to attack the supply. This means monitoring where pimps are taking the victims out and their movement, where they're moving to, where they're taking them, where they're selling them, so we'll be able to rescue them. The next step to conquer sex trafficking is to attack the demand. Did you know right now there are many cases, over 100 in the U.S., that traffickers have been prosecuted and are in jail right now? Out of all of these cases, there have not has been one buyer who has bought sex from a child that's actually prosecuted for that. Over the 500 children that I have rescued, none of the buyers have been tried for having sex with a minor. We must conquer that as well. The next step to conquer sex trafficking is to disrupt the system by educating the community, and this means the school systems as well. Many children are trafficked right inside the school system. The educators are not even understanding or knowing that their children are being trafficked, so we need to start with education there. Building partnerships with other organizations is definitely a way to conquer sex trafficking, and this means free clinic organizations as well, child and family services for children in the foster care system. 
All of these resources, all the people that work there should be trained to identify sex trafficking victims. At Courtney's House, we have many projects because there are many ways that you have to reach out to sex trafficking victims and train the community and law enforcement. With that said, we have street outreach. Street outreach is on Fridays and Saturdays from 2 a.m. to 7 a.m. We go out in high trafficking areas for both boys, girls, and a transgender population as well. Research. To do research, you actually have to know where the girls are taken to and how you expand your street outreach. They go hand in hand. With the research component, we do that from January until April. We expand our areas based on the research that we do for street outreach. We have a 24-hour hotline that's for survivors by survivors. This means survivors of all forms of human trafficking answer the hotline, sexual assault, and domestic violence all over the nation. We also provide support groups. Now, these are survivor-centered support groups that are on specific issues of their sex trafficking situations. Things that we focus on on the support groups are how to sleep alone at night, what do you do when you have a nightmare? And how to really get through that process. Now at our drop-in center that we have in DC, the drop-in center covers all of Northern Virginia, all of Washington DC, and Maryland to Howard County. There you can come in after school for any services such as tutoring, food, you can come in for clothing and accessories that you may need. Full case management. Full case management honestly means that our case manager meets with the kids once a week and we work on the goals that they want to achieve. We break them down in small ways that they can really understand their trauma. One of the things we focus on in their case management is their safety assessment plan. This means if they feel unsafe, where would they go? Who would they call? What are some best ways and people that they can talk to that they do feel safe, such as calling the survivor hotline? The other thing we do is counseling for family members. Now, most people think because their children are sex trafficked that all the families are bad families. This is not true. Yes, some families are bad families that traffic their children, but honestly, the majority are good, loving parents. So what we do is have to counsel the family as well. Imagine having your 12-year-old child taken away from you. They were raped every day. As a parent, you blame yourself for that. You blame yourself for not being able to help that child. So family counseling is a very important component. So actually the family, the parents actually come to counseling separate from their child, and it's a 13-week program for them. When families are done with the counseling, they also volunteer with Courtney's House. The other thing that I created was the host family placement. Now I actually created the host family placement by trial. This was actually because not every child is going to be a great fit for our group home. But what do you do when parents are trafficking the child and they need a wonderful home environment and foster care is not the answer? So we actually have volunteers who go through an application process, who are also go through drug assessment. They take um, lie detectors as well. We go into the home and we take pictures of their home life. And they actually invite these children into their home where they live and provide housing for them and do not get paid. In a host family setting, our children flourish through it. I even have wonderful host families that want to adopt the children now. At Shay's Place Group Home, that's located in Northern Virginia, it is an undisclosed location where children can be safe away from their trafficking situations. It is a long-term care facility for girls only, ages 12, transitioning out at age 18, long term from six months to three years. This is a one-stop shop where they receive school, where they receive counseling, they receive all of the same services just at a place where they can call home. We also provide law enforcement training, both locally and nationally. This includes FBI, local police, sheriff's department, and even the foster care systems as well. 
We also coordinate with law enforcement to prosecute pimps. Now this means I do something I never thought I would do as a survivor of sex trafficking. I'm also do expert witness testimony in trials. This means around the country where I actually speak up for the victims and say what type of abuse that they went through and endured so we can get longer times for the pimps who forced them into trafficking situations. We also lobby for legal reform. I testify in front of Congress to change the laws, to change both federal laws and local laws around the nation. Courtney's House provides medical and psychological assessments as well. We kind of break down our psychological assessment and medical assessments in a way where kids can actually understand. So we shorten it and we really try to focus on the trauma recovery. We provide legal advocacy for victims. Now what that means at Courtney's House means we have to sometimes get children out of the juvenile detention center. We get them off of probation. We find pro bono good attorneys that are able to take their cases and fight for them as well. We also try to provide fun things for the survivors, such as field trips and parties. This would mean a Halloween party, holiday parties, places where kids can just be a kid. Many of our children honestly haven't been to a movie theater. They haven't done anything fun that normal kids are able to do. So we want to provide a safe space where kids can just be kids. We need funds. Do you know that it's very hard to get funding in this field? So sometimes I don't get paid so I can pay my staff. We need case managers and street outreach workers as a paid position. Right now, we have 26 active cases, one case manager, which means that I also have to help out on cases. Legal, legal advocates for our clients. We do legal assessments and we really try to connect our kids to the right lawyers, but we need more. Volunteer coordinators. We have over 100 volunteers. We are so blessed to have all of that, but we need people to help manage them as well. Operation costs for Shay's Place. Shay's Place is expected to open in January, and we're ready. We're licensed. We're ready to go. However, we don't have the funds to pay for staff. We need operation costs for the drop-in center. We get many things donated, but we don't have laptops for the kids, enough books for them to read that they even requested. Right now, what we honestly need is your support. You understand our needs and our goals and what we provide, but we need you. We need your help and your support. Thank you. As a survivor of sex trafficking at the age of 14, I learned something from my experience. I learned what the trafficker did at that time. He was able to get away, and he was never prosecuted or charged or spent a day in jail. I spent a year in juvenile detention, and that stigma really lasted the rest of my life, as feeling that I was the one to blame then. Over time, I realized that I survived a horrible abuse and really torture each day, but I learned something. The experience that I actually learned was what the traffickers did, how they recruited the young girls, where they took us, how much they sold us for. It taught me that I can teach and help others. During the skills that I learned from the traffickers, I learned how to rescue the girls. I learned that I will not let this happen to anybody else, and I learned that I am actually winning in this because I know how they actually move and how they think. So that's the reason at Courtney's House we have all the services that we have to help our kids with the hotline. The reason why we use survivors of either trafficking, sexual assault, or domestic violence is that when you call a hotline, you need to bond with someone that has been through an experience similar to yours. That way, when the other person is talking, that you'll listen, and you know if they got out of their situation, you'll be able to get out of yours. I also learned that you have to work with other NGOs, even in the anti-trafficking movement, other survivor-run organizations around the country that we work with, and also locally. You have to work with medical providers. Many of our children and myself were seen at free clinics. 
but doctors did not know how to reach out to us, and we were too scared for that. So we train others on how to do that approach. We take a holistic approach, street outreach, counseling, law enforcement training, education, and we pressure for the legal reform. I cannot stress to you how much we have to change the law to protect our children. I think what makes Courtney's house effective is that it, to me it would be very difficult to work in this field if you did not either have a survivor who was explaining to you what exactly goes on or a survivor yourself starting the organization. Because of the research that we do, because of my own experience that we base it off of knowing and working with the children, we truly want to empower them. Working with law enforcement and social service providers, we do a little differently at Courtney's house. We provide specific trainings for them, which means we train them on what questions to ask the survivors. We train them on the locations that they go, the rules that they have to endure each day. Therefore, they'll be able to do their interview process better. From 2003 to 2010, I won the FBI's Best Victim Services Award. This is a national award throughout the country that the FBI puts out. It is for the best services for victims and also training for law enforcement. We have very low overhead. Most of our money goes into services, not into the administration or the building. We're very lucky that our drop-in center, townhouse that we use, was donated to us from a church, so we don't worry about that. However, all the utilities and all the other services we do have to take care of. So at this time, even all our speaking engagement, everything goes right back to direct services. I donate every speaking engagement back to the kids that we provide services to. At Courtney's house, success means to me, when a victim calls the hotline, that's a huge success. They're reaching out for help. When a kid can sleep through the night without nightmares, that's a tremendous success to us. The number of clients offer food, water, trinkets through street outreach. The number of clients who receive services like medical, legal, psychiatric treatment from Courtney's house as well. We also measure the number of clients who are reunited with families and re-enrolled in the school system. The number of clients who stay out of prostitution. And I am very happy to say that all of our kids that we currently work with are not involved in prostitution. We decrease the number of trafficking victims arrested and charged by law enforcement officials. Now, this has been a tremendous effort in the Washington, D.C. area that we have truly fought for every day. The increased number of trafficking arrests changed and convicted by law enforcement officials through the training that Courtney's House provides on a local and national level. They are able to understand the trafficking situations and not arrest our kids, but prosecute the traffickers, and that is a success. Increased number of traffickers arrested, charged, and convicted by law enforcement officials. This is something that we have pushed for and definitely are making strides in. An increase in numbers of buyers arrested, charged, and convicted by law enforcement officials. This is something that we work on on a daily basis to get the buyers charged and on a sex offenders list. Most of the survivors at Courtney's house is under the age of 16. So to say that they're doing remarkably well, less than a year of providing services and become mentors themselves within our program, to me is remarkable. It speaks of their own voices and how they try to take over their own recovery process. Trafficking victims are not criminals. You know, I work with mostly minors and many of our children are arrested and charged for sex trafficking when, of course, under federal definition, they're seen as victims. These are grown men who manipulate children to do their work, and actually they're the ones that are charged. That is definitely something that we're trying to get stopped because victims should not be arrested and charged. After all, do we 
arrest and charge rape victims. Shay's Place is not like a juvenile detention facility. I really wanted Shay's Place to feel like home, not a juvenile detention center. We are not a lockdown facility. We are a confidential facility, but we are not a lockdown facility. When you walk into our home, you see the warm environment and all of the rooms look like what I thought rooms should look like. Growing up in a foster care system, I was in over 23 foster homes. I really wanted something, my dream, of what my very own bedroom would be like. And this is actually what Shay's Place looks like. It looks like a home with a loving environment. At Courtney's House, we focus on domestic trafficking. That means U.S. citizens who are trafficked inside the United States. That's because over 200,000 U.S. citizen children are trafficked inside the United States each year. Because I wasn't aware of services out there, and many of our youth are not as well. There are three main ways that U.S. citizen children are trafficked inside the U.S. One is older boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. So that's an older man manipulating a younger girl into sex trafficking. The number two way is family control trafficking. This means the family has raised their children to have forced prostitution and make money off of that. Now, that's not for drugs. Many people think, wow, it's probably because all of the parents are on drugs. But actually, many of the parents are not on drugs, and they just use this as a secondary income. The third way is gangs. Gangs is a huge way into sex trafficking. Many gangs have stopped selling drugs and sell children because you make more money. At Courtney's house, we work with trafficking victims who are currently in prostitution, who have left prostitution, and have returned to prostitution for whatever reason. Though the ultimate goal is to get the victims out of prostitution, we understand that many of our kids, especially the boys, were trafficked between the ages of six to eight years old. So they think that this is what life is supposed to be. So sometimes that takes time. We do something very unique at Courtney's House. We serve girls, boys, and the transgender community. Many people say, why would we do that? Well, 86% of all of our youth identify as LGBTQQ, lesbian, bisexual, gay, transgender, questioning, or career youth. And many of our boys were actually trafficked through the ages of six to nine years old, and their buyers were not women, they were men. We offer counseling to families. Well, at this time, we have 26 active cases and one case manager. So I have to split my time and offer support and counseling to the families as well. Of course, the families needs counseling as well. Their child has came home and they were severely abused. So working with the families is something that I do on a daily basis. We formally provided services for 21 and over as well. We had to end this two months ago because of capacity, I just can't keep it up. So we have to focus right now for under the age of 18. Since 2008, we have provided services for more than 500 clients. We're on the streets when the victims are on the streets. We're not nine to five. We're the only organization doing direct street outreach in DC on the weekends from 2 a.m. to 7 a.m. We're the only organization of its kind that's run by a survivor in the DC area of sex trafficking. In 2004, I helped create the D.C. Human Trafficking Task Force that consists of the U.S. Attorney's Office, law enforcement, service providers, and also the foster care system. I helped create this so that all of us can work on the same level of getting traffickers in jail and survivors out of jail. That way we can build cases where we're all on the same page. In Northern Virginia, we helped start a human trafficking working group that's located in Richmond. After tougher laws are passed in Maryland and D.C., major activities moved to Virginia, mostly gang-related, and we recognize this. More and more of our clients are coming from Virginia. 
These are gang control cases, where the only organization working with gang control trafficking, which understands how gangs traffic children. Many of our girls that are trafficked in our gangs are actually trafficked and recruited much younger, at age nine even. We educate the police to identify trafficking victims. Gang control trafficking is very difficult. Many of the girls are afraid to say what's going on in the gangs because it's so violent. We also offer tattoo removals through ECPAC USA. We offer tattoo removals because in the gangs, many of our children are burned the initials of the trafficker with cigarettes onto their skins. We educate police around the country to identify trafficking victims. I think this is very important because we don't just do it for our D.C. area. We actually do this on a national basis. Courtney's house actually does not call the police up and beg them to have us come in. Police call us and, and for specialized mandatory trainings. This means a lot because this means that it's mandatory for all of the police to go through our training on identifying victims. We train for juvenile detention centers as well and probation officers in group homes. It's also a mandatory training that the juvenile facilities and staff make that Courtney House trains them on identifying who the victims are. We assist in the prosecutions. So I actually do expert witness testimony in trials on behalf of the victim, showing what the pimps did and how long it takes our kids to recover from their trauma. We also push for torture charges. Many of our children were tortured, quite frankly, and I myself was tortured. And so torture has a longer time in jail, so we push for that for traffickers to be charged for torture. Our hard work has gained us national recognition. We're working with the Department of Justice to implement the first mandatory training of U.S. attorneys on how to prosecute sex trafficking cases. We've also received many awards for our work. Since 2003, and every year since then, I have received the FBI Victim Services Award in 18 different states. In 2006, Red Book Heroes Award. In 2007, I was nominated for the CNN Heroes Award. In 2010, I won the Frederick Douglass Award. I'm the first U.S. citizen to win the award. The award is for freeing yourself through slavery and helping save over 500 victims. Among the challenges we face are inadequate staffing. We currently have a staff of four. There's no way we can meet the demand of a problem that happens 24-7. We're missing opportunities. If Virginia calls us and D.C. calls us in on a case for a victim, we have to pick which one call first. We can't help both because we have four staff. Due to the lack of funds, we're all paid part-time. But our working schedule has us doing up to 90 hours a week, and we are 24 hours on call. Lawmakers' resistance to legislation that is tougher on johns and pimps. This means we spend our time talking to the police, making them arrest the traffickers, and going after the buyers who are buying sex from the children. There's a widespread misconception about trafficking have led to institutional resistance to facilities and services for victims. This means, on the books, as a state of Virginia, there are currently money that victims can receive for being victims of a crime. But because they do not see trafficking victims as victims of a crime, that means that Courtney's house has to pay for services that the state should already pay for. We're understaffed. We need money for all positions, from case management position to general staff positions. Unfortunately, there's not much federal grant money for domestic sex trafficking. Annually, there's only one to two federal grants that are specifically for domestic sex trafficking victims, and over 250 organizations apply for that money, and only two were given out this year. 
More federal money is actually directed toward international victims of trafficking. There's over $4 million each year that's allocated for foreign national victims of trafficking, and not enough for U.S. citizen victims. We rely upon private sector donors, foundation grants, and churches to help run our organization. Shaysway's group home is in Northern Virginia, and we're licensed through the state of Virginia. So that means that we have requirements for staff. We have to have five staff to open our doors that are licensed through the state and go by state requirements of salary as well. So basically, that means that they have to make more than me. We also need equipment for street outreach and our research team as well. We need money for computers and IT staff. We need vans for street outreach. We have to use our own cars, and that takes up a lot of gas. We also pick up our kids in various locations and bring them to the drop-in center. So we ask staff and volunteers to use their own gas for that as well. We need more money for other street outreach supplies, such as food, the trinkets that we use, the water that we pass out. We need more funding for that. Also, the training for legal advocates for our clients. Right now, we do an intake, a legal intake, and we really need more help with the legal intake with legal advisors. We need more money to support our hours for our drop-in center. Our drop-in center is the space where kids can come on any time they need to get help. We had to cut those hours because of funding. So this beautiful house that was donated from the church is also our drop-in center space and staff space as well. There's so much work that still needs to be done on the house, but we still provide direct services there. There's a lot that needs to be done, and we need your help. Some of the gaps that our organization could fill, but isn't able to fill, are services specifically geared towards boys. Now, most people assume when we're speaking about girls being sex trafficked, that there are probably more girls than boys. Actually, there are a lot of boys being sex trafficked in the U.S., but there's no housing, no specialized services. We're actually the only organization that provides services to boys who are sex trafficked in the United States. There are many international organizations that are interested in partnering with us. They ask us to share our curriculum that we created for support groups and also the street outreach curriculum that we currently do. We would love to be able to help victims worldwide. We also would like to expand our services for the transgender and transsexual trafficking victims as well. Human trafficking reaches inside the school system. However, because we're understaffed and underfunded, we haven't had the resources to do this. We're missing a tremendous opportunity. We can be training teachers to identify victims and speaking directly to the students who are being recruited inside the school system.